conversation is going to be on the weight of the weight, um, the weight of the weight. And so I just want to just give that to each and every one of you. Good morning, everybody. I am Reverend Dr. DJ Robinson, and I will be uh, preaching for you this morning. And so I'm so glad to be with you. Um, I want to give a wonderful shout out and thanks to uh, my church, uh, New Horizon Faith Center, and the elevation and the assignment of uh, Reverend Patrick Crumedy. I'm so glad to have planted the church, and uh, now it is time for the Lord to move me into a different season. So I'm so thankful for each and every one of you, and I love you all. Um, I am just ecstatic about what God is doing. So uh, let's get right into the scripture. Today's scripture is going to be coming from the book of John, the book of John. And please give a like, a heart, or a thumbs up if you can hear me well on this broadcast. Amen. I'm hoping that everyone can hear me well on the broadcast. Amen. And so um, today we're going to be talking from John chapter five, John chapter five. And this has to do with the healing at the pool. And I want to give you some uh, some notes uh, to give you uh, what to do when you have the weight of waiting, what to do when you have the weight of waiting. And I'm just going to check my to make sure that you all can hear me, amen. To make sure that you all can hear me. All right, awesome, awesome. The weight of waiting, okay. And so John chapter five, verse uh, one through three. And I want to read this today from the New King James Version. I wanna read this from the New King James Version this morning. Um, the reason why is because in the NIV, there's something missing in the NIV and in the Amplified Bible. And so we want to make sure that we are capturing the whole essence of this text. Um, I was talking with my granny this week and she was congratulating me on the promotion and the elevation that I've received and then also the elevations of everyone else. And so I wanted to just uh, tell her, you know, she told me, she said, well, there was a waiting, there was a waiting and what are people waiting on? And so I want to just get that to you this morning. So let's go to John chapter five. And it says, after this, there was a feast of the Jews and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. And now there is at Jerusalem by the sheep market, a pool, which is called which is called in the Hebrew tongue, Bethsaida, having five porches. And in these lay a great multitude of impotent folk, of blind, halt, withered, waiting for the moving of the water. For, in verse four, for an angel went down at a certain season into the pool and troubled the water. Whosoever then first after the troubling of the water stepped in was made whole and of whatsoever disease he had. Now, a certain man was there which had an infirmity for 30 and eight years. And when Jesus saw him lie, he knew that he had been there a long time in that case and saith unto him, wilt thou be made whole? The impotent man answered, sir, I have no one to help me. I have no one when the water is troubled to put me in the pool. But while I am coming, another person steps down before me. And Jesus said unto him, rise, take up your bed and walk. In verse nine, I got to do this. Immediately, the man was made whole and took up his bed and walked. And on the same day was the Sabbath. Now, 
This is verse nine. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. And so verse nine uh, makes it very plain. So as I was reflecting on this message, as I was reflecting on this text, I was asking myself, I said, well, you know, my granny asked me, well, what are people waiting on? What are people waiting on? And so he as, and so so some of us right now during this COVID-19 crisis are waiting on uh, a, a healing. Some of us are waiting on a, he, uh, a deliverance. Some of us are waiting on um, the angel, so to speak, to trouble the water. Some of us are waiting on stimulus checks. Some of us are waiting on loans. Some of us are waiting for this season to be over. A lot of us are waiting on uh, 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 a burden to be lifted. Uh, some of us are waiting to hear from other loved ones. Some of us are waiting uh, by the by and we're waiting uh, for the angel to come and stir the waters. We're waiting for God to come and stir up some things. We're waiting for God to change some things. We're waiting for God to give us a word. And so what we should be waiting on, one of the things I put in my notes, is that we should be waiting on the word of God. And let me tell you why. Because here's the thing. This man had been sitting here. Hey, God, help me preach. Thank you, Father, for this word this morning. Let it touch your people this morning in Jesus' name. Lord, help me preach this morning. And so some of us are waiting, and this man had been waiting there for 30 and 8 years. He had been waiting for the troubling of the water. He had been waiting for God to move in his life. He had been waiting for something to come, for, come forward for him. And so while he was waiting, he was waiting on God to do something, and Jesus came by, and he says, will do you want Want to be made whole? Do you want to be made whole? And so what had happened was that Jesus knew that this man had been here for 38 years. Why? Because there were other people who were talking. See, there's a lot that can happen. Help me preach God. Let me take these shoes off. There's a lot that can happen when we are waiting on God to move. People can change your narrative when you are waiting. People can add to the narrative. People can take away from your narrative. People will start to tell little lies, little rumors about you when you're waiting. When you're waiting on God to move, people will make up their own stories and, and fix it in their minds. And no matter how much you try to re-explain it, no matter how much it makes sense to you, it doesn't make sense to other people because there are so many things that can happen and this weighs you down. I believe that this man was weighed down because he was waiting at the pool. He was waiting. Now, mind you, there were five porches of people who were lame and troubled and, and, and they, they says they were blind and they were halted and they were withered and they were waiting for God to move. And so let me just tell you something about this text. There is something that, that spoke to me when he said that there were five porches of people who had infirmity. There's another text that says that they had infirmities. And so what I'm looking at right now is during this COVID-19 crisis that we have five bridges, five things that are happening in the healthcare system. And there are people who are waiting on a cure. They are waiting on a vaccine. We're waiting on the economic, on the economy to re be re-stimulated. We are waiting for so many different elements and we're waiting for elements that cannot help us. It wasn't until the word of God came to this man who had been sitting there with the weight of oppression, with the weight of being marginalized, with the weight of being kicked out of society, with the weight of having other people's narratives inflicted upon him, with the weight of trying to care for other people, with the weight. And so it wasn't until Jesus showed up the word of God that came to him and asked him a simple question. Do you want to be made whole? Do you want to be complete today? Do you want to lift off this burden of weight, lift off the burden of negatives, negativity, lift off the burden of narratives, lift off the burden of navigating between these people and between the healthcare system and the oppression of economy. Do you want to be made whole today? And he says, yes. He says, but here's the thing. I have pressure coming from the top. I have pressure coming from the top. I have the Pharisees and the Sadducees that say that I'm not fit. I have the Pharisees in the society that say that 
I have leprosy. I have the Pharisees and I have society and I have people telling me that I'm never going to amount to anything. I have people that are telling me that I'm never going to be nothing. I got people that are adding to my narrative and trying to put the weight of their narratives on me. And every time I try to get to God, hey God, every time I try to go in prayer, every time I try to read God's word, every time I look for God and look for the angel to stir up the pool, every time I try to take an opportunity to go and minister the gospel, every time I try to do something for God, somebody else gets in the way. Hey God, hey God, somebody else gets in the way. And so what, what he says, he says, he says, listen, every time, look at verse seven, the impotent man, he answered him because he had some conditions. He had some infirmities. He had some stuff that was going on with him. He had some stuff that wasn't quite right. And he knew that it wasn't right, but he had been marginalized and put out of the society. He had been put in a nursing home. Maybe he had been put in a hospital. Maybe he had been put, put in a, a mental psychiatric. He had been put in chemical dependency. There were five porches of people who were sick with infirmities that society did not want to deal with. And so he says, every time I try to make a move for God, somebody else or something gets in my way. And so Jesus says to him, he says, listen, take up your bed. Hey, God, take up all of your stuff, everything that has, has had you afflicted, everything that has had you burdened down, take up just your bed and leave these people where they are. Leave these opinions where they are. Leave these narratives where they are. Take up your bed and walk and you have to get up. He says, and immediately as soon as he allowed himself to be free, the only thing that he needed was what he had in his own testimony, his own bed, wherever he lay. He says, listen, you need to get out of here. You need to get away from other people's expectations of you. Come on, I'm encouraging somebody. You need to get away from other people's narratives about you. You need to get away from this false expectation that the government or that this society is going to heal you and going to cure you. You need to be waiting on something. Then what you need to be waiting on is the word of God. The word of God incarnate in the flesh came to this man who had been sitting there and trying for 38 years. He had been trying to hear and trying to feel a move from God. And it wasn't until the word of God came to him that it encouraged him and told him that you need to get up out of this situation. You need to get up out of all these expectations. You need to get up out of this stuff. And so, and so, and so, and so God, and so God, he, 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 he said, he said, he said, he said, listen, 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 man. Listen, woman. Get up. He said, rise. There's something about the word rise while you're waiting. See, sometimes people are waiting. I'm talking about the weight of waiting. And so while you're waiting, God is elevating you. Sometimes you want things to be over quickly. You want this epidemic to be over quickly. You want to see your family quickly. You want to get to be able to move about quickly. But God is rising you. He's bringing you up to a higher level in him. See, this is the thing about it. This is, let me just tell you this. The Bible told me, and I was reading it, it says that the letter, it killeth, but the spirit give life. See, the thing about this man is he was under the law. He was under the letter. The Pharisees had wrote him something saying, you no longer are fit for society. Come on, somebody is in that situation right now. We don't want to give you a job because you're not fit for the task. You're not qualified for the task. But the spirit came upon this man and said, rise up and take your bed and walk. Rise up, take your testimony because the Bible says that the that they overcame by the blood of the lamb and by the power of their testimonies. And so he says, take up your testimony and keep it moving. Matter of fact, be like Enoch, be like Enoch. Keep walking until they can't even see you no more. Keep walking until you can't even. So while you're waiting and you're carrying, cast off those weights, 
Cast off the cares that easily beset you. Cast those things off and start to walk forward. Take up your bed and walk. Now, let me just go to this. Now, in verse 10, when you get this kind of freedom, when you get this kind of liberation, some people are going to not like it. Let me look at verse 10. We're in John chapter 5. Now we're at verse 10. Jew, the Jews, the Jews, come on, the Jews, the society, those elite ones, those who make up the rules, therefore said unto him that was cured, it is the set. It is the Sabbath day and it is not lawful for you to carry your bed. See, they dismissed the fact that he had been in a state of depression for 38 years. They dismissed the fact that he had an infirmity for 38 years. They dismissed the fact. See, they're not they're not worried about your freedom. They worried about whether or not you're breaking the rules. Come on. They're not worried about how much weight that you had on you when you were sitting, how how hard it was to sit there under the scrutiny of society or under the scrutiny of a community. They're not worried about that, but they're worried about the fact that you're walking with your bed, that you're walking with your testimony. But I'm going to just tell you for the young people, talk it like I walk it and talk it like I walk it, walk it, walk it like I talk it. Now I'm just telling you right now, somebody need to hashtag that. And so he says, he says, he says, immune, um, he says, he, him that was cured, it is the Sabbath day and it is not lawful for you to carry your bed. And so he answered them and he said, the one that made me whole said unto me, take up my bed and walk. The one that made me whole because see, y'all couldn't do it. Hey God, y'all couldn't do it. And so the one that made me whole is the one that, that told me to walk. And so he says, and he that was healed did not know that it was Jesus. And, and so he, let's see, he did not know it was Jesus for Jesus had conveyed himself away and the multitude being in that place. See, he didn't know. See, sometimes the word of God will come to you through unexpected places and unexpected people. You don't even know where the word came from, but the word came and made you whole. And so then he says, afterwards, Jesus found him in the temple and said, behold to him, thou art made whole. Don't go back. Hey, God, this is preaching to me. Don't go back into that same uh, situation again, or you will come out worse than you went in. He said, behold, thou art made whole. Sin no more, lest a worse thing come unto me. There are some things, people of God, that God has delivered you from, and he's telling you that now that you are free, don't you go back into that bondage. Don't you go back into that situation that kill, almost killed you. Don't you go back into those places that almost uh, made you have a nervous breakdown. Don't you go back into those places. This is the you have cast off that weight. You have waited on the Lord. And now he's telling you to walk. So you were waited. Now you waited. And now you're walking. And so I thank God for this word this morning. And so then he says, then the man departed and told the Jews that it was Jesus which made him whole. And so sometimes you have to say it was the word of God, not the word of the letter, not anything that you all are trying to put on me, but it is the word of God that has made me whole. And therefore did the Jews persecute Jesus and sought to slay him because he had done these things on the Sabbath. And so Jesus, I even read it somewhere else, Jesus said that while my father is working on the Sabbath, there's another part in this uh, on the New Testament. He said in the new, um, in new international version, he says that while my father works, I'm working. And so the thing about it is he had to tell them, I don't work for you. I work for God. And I understand it now when people say that I don't work for you. I work for God. And so you have to make sure that you abide by the rules of the of the government. You abide by those who have charge over you. But at the ultimate sacrifice, you have to know that your source is the Lord God, that these things are nothing but a resource. Your stimulus check that you wake on, nothing but a resource. Your cure that you wake on, nothing but a resource. That phone call that cell phone, nothing but a resource. But God is the ultimate source that can make you whole today. I preach to you. I hope that you receive this message. I hope that you have received something that will help you today. And I'm thankful for everyone who was able to come on and to, uh, to be online with me this morning. I'm hoping that this message has healed you. I'm hoping that this message has delivered you when you have a weight on you and you're waiting on something. 
You need the word of God to help you to rise up and start to walk. I'm giving you that. The weight, W-E-I-G-H-T, the weight that is on you while you're waiting, W-A-I-T-I-N-G. The weight while you're waiting. When you have that, you need the word, W-O-R-D, to lift you and so that you can walk, W-A-L-K. You need to be able to do that. And so I'm thanking God for this morning. I'm thanking God for everything that he is doing. I'm praying for you, Father. We just thank you for everyone who has heard this word this morning. We thank you for their... Um, their tenacity. We ask right now, God, that you would heal them. Lord, we ask that whatever they are waiting on, that you would send your word, God, so that they could be made whole. And Lord, we ask right now that you would uh, just continue to bless me, bless the ministry, bless the church, God, bless everyone in the name of Christ Jesus. Bless your leaders this morning, God. We ask right now that you would do that in the name of Jesus. And so God, um, we ask right now that if there is anyone who has not received Jesus Christ as their personal Lord and Savior, that Lord, you would touch their hearts right now and have them to pray this prayer. Lord Jesus, come into our lives. Be our Lord and Savior. God, we admit that we do not have it all together. We admit that we have been sitting at the pool waiting for other people to be our cure. We admit that it is only your word that can heal us, that can cause us to rise, be made whole and be and walk our path. And so God, I'm asking you right now to come into my life and walk with me. And if you have prayed that prayer, Romans 9 says that anyone who confesses with their mouth and believes in their heart that Jesus Lord is savior, that they will be saved. And whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. So if you have prayed that prayer this morning, you are saved today. And if you need a church home, I will invite you to go to New Horizon Faith Center, which is um, a church uh, plant. And then uh, with Reverend Patrick Crumedy, or I can send you to Zion Hill uh, Missionary Baptist Church. We also have other ministries of uh, the seven times 70 ministry, uh, another chance ministries with uh, Pastor Gail Ellis Burks. We have a lot of ministries. So if you need a ministry today, you can also inbox me at drdjrobinson.com, which if you need a ministry to go to something in your area, we have a plethora of pastors and leaders that will call you, come and help guide you and, and and, and uh, bring you in more to the kingdom. So I thank you each and every one of you for tuning in this morning. I ask that God's grace will be upon you. And as my granny has given me these words, I pray that this helps someone. I pray that you have peace in your soul, wisdom in your mind and strength in your body. In Jesus name, amen and amen.